So I've sent out and posted up on Blackboard in the area uh, labeled course syllabus. If you go down the, the column of material, uh, it includes the various basic units. At the top, there's the course syllabus. And under the course syllabus heading, after you click on that, there's the syllabus and then uh, the more extensive description of the exegetical research paper. You've chosen your topics earlier. You did your literary analysis and character study of your, uh, your chosen passage. Now the final pr product is going to bring together your findings out of that research uh, analysis and then put together what we call a complete exegetical presentation. The outline I've suggested with its eight parts, uh, seems like a lot, uh, is a suggested uh, outline. There are some things that you could do without, without labeling in your paper according to the classical uh, Turabian uh, style guidelines. Uh, you could do these in, in different ways. You could roll your exegetical outline into your exegetical notes and so forth. But one just talks about talk about some of the various sections of the research paper presentation. Uh, we begin, of course, with an introduction. After your title page, uh, following the standard uh, seminary form that's posted online, uh, the introduction to your passage. You kind of work from, from broad to narrow in the process, but the various things to discuss in the introduction would include the setting within the book of Genesis. You want to describe the, the biblical, since we're dealing with narrative, historical material, uh, you wanted to, to look at how your particular passage is positioned uh, within the larger narrative of the patriarchal stories in Genesis 12 to 36. And then broader uh, book of Genesis, moving to how it fits within 12 to 36, and then briefly describe the, uh, the before context and after context of your particular passage. Some of you have chosen a small section within a chapter, others have chosen a major portion of a chapter, but uh, fitting it within the book of Genesis. Then we want to look at the larger historical setting. We've talked about ancient Near Eastern history, uh, the time of the biblical patriarchs, which we call an archaeology, the Middle Bronze Age, which is, uh, begins around 2000 BC, and we will put Abraham somewhere around 2000. Some will put him as early as 2100 during what's sometimes referred to as the Intermediate Bronze Age, period of transition in the ancient Near East. But moving into in the historical and cultural setting of the ancient Near East, we talked about the journey from southern Mesopotamia to northern Mesopotamia to the land of Canaan. So you want to uh, describe where uh, your part of the story fits in to that migration of the patriarchal family, uh, the larger Near Eastern setting, and then, of course, within the land of Canaan, uh, talking about geography, uh, history, and also cultural practice. We talked about adoption, uh, the use of concubine to gain an heir, and other practices of that area. So however your particular chosen passage uh, can be further explained or described, describe the uh, cultural practices of that era. Other uh, biblical background material as well that might play into the fact we know some about the archaeology of places like Bethel uh, that is in uh, Unit 14 and also back in uh, uh, Chapter 28, Jacob's first encounter with uh, with God at Bethel. Uh, other places, you know, uh, the site of Shechem, for example, extensively excavated uh, several times over the 1900s in particular. So uh, the introduction should include introduction to your uh, the book of Genesis, you know, in particular the passage within Genesis 12 to 36, historical, cultural, archaeological, and other material uh, background, where it's applicable, of course, to your particular passage. And yeah, that all those things which can help to explicate the meaning of your passage. Part two, then, is your own translation. Uh, we don't need 
uh, like I've asked you to do in previous, I kind of wrote mechanical translation. Just give your uh, your best translation of the passage. I often refer to the guidelines that we were given. I was part of the translation team for the original Holman Christian Standard Bible uh, back in the late 1990s, 2000. They were working on the project, and we were given the general guidelines of doing a translation which had the accuracy of the New American Standard or the New America, uh, the New King James Bible, but with the readability of the NIV, the ESV, or one of the more modern translations. And that was quite a uh, challenging task uh, to do that and provide extensive footnotes. But again, your translation, um, uh, and only, I would say, with regard to parsing of verbs, only deal with parsing in your exegetical notes uh, where a particular parsing where a PO is used, say, instead of a cow or a hithpiel is used instead of a PL or whatever, uh, only deal with uh, uh, verb parsing where it is uh, particularly meaningful uh, in the exegesis of your passage. So I would say to roll that aspect of uh, translation. However, your translation should be followed by part three, uh, the text critical footnote. Um, and I would say with regard to this, of course, you have to refer to your uh, uh, Stuttgart Bible, your Biblical Hebraic uh, Stuttgartensia, and the, the lower textual material that are part of the Masoretic details. Uh, as well, uh, you may want to address any keywords that you've translated in a nuanced manner. That is, if uh, in your translation you're you're going kind of against the norm, highlight some of those in your uh, textual footnotes. Part four is your exegetical outline. Now, your exegetical outline should come from your literary analysis that you did in your previous uh, presentation. Let's do right after the fall break. Uh, there, the exegetical line is that, uh, the outline is that which is derived from, again, the, the way that the Hebrew text is structured, the way it structures itself uh, in the presentation of the particular passage. So that outline uh, will at least one, but no more than two sub-levels, because most of the time you're only dealing with, uh, at max, say, 15 to 20 verses. So you shouldn't need to go more than two sublevels in the uh, in the outline structure. Then the majority of this paper will be in the part five exegetical notes and discussion. That is to thoroughly explain the meaning of your text, highlighting the results of word studies that you've done, study of the semantic domain of, of important terms that are used in your passage. Also refer to the structural analysis you did, literary study, the rhetoric, that is, you know, the means of emphasis, how uh, repetition and other rhetorical elements are utilized in the material to highlight particular meaningful elements in the biblical passage. Uh, and also any pertinent background material that you've uh, generally discussed in the introduction to your paper uh, highlight, you know, if you were doing Genesis chapter 15 and uh, your your passage was focused on the sacrificial act where he divides the animals and so forth and lays them out uh, as instructed, uh, then you would want to deal more thoroughly with uh, the background of ancient Near Eastern culture in that particular sacrificial practice. So those are the types of things. And then uh, in that, Ultimately, you want to get to the what we sometimes refer to as the meta narrative of the biblical text, the larger uh, theological lessons, theological implications, how we understand God, God in relationship to his people, whether it's the patriarch or other individuals in your story. Uh, in your exegetical notes, thoroughly discuss again the resultant meaning of the text. Then we move on to the presentation of, as you would use your passage, 
in a preaching, teaching, or other type of instructional setting. Now, the homiletical teaching outline is often maybe the same as your exegetical outline, but you may have chosen, especially if you've got a larger passage, that you want to focus on, say, seven or eight verses in your, say, uh, in your sermon uh, of, of your particular passage, and therefore your sermon outline is going to be built around those, say, key seven verses in the heart of your passage or the last seven verses as it may, you know, and whatever is uh, what you're trying to do in the presentation, uh, in which case, you know, the preface material and the period follow will be things that you would discuss in the introduction to your sermon. So it may be the same as your ex exegetical outline, but it may be different. And that's that's up to you and how you would choose to preach or teach your given passage. Again, I've asked you only to briefly describe uh, uh, in an outline and then just with very, very little to briefly discuss the practical applications that you would emphasize as you take this, as we say, from the pulpit to the pew, how are your people now supposed to respond to the teaching of your biblical passage? So those are the types of things to highlight at the conclusion of your preaching teaching outline. And then finally, a conclusion, a brief highlighting the key contribution of your passage to the understanding of Genesis, the patriarchal narratives, and ultimately God's plan for his people through subsequent history. We've talked over and over again about the major theme of blessing throughout uh, Genesis from the call of Abraham uh, through the, uh, the life of, of Jacob. And then finally, to include your bibliography. And to make a note there, to also include periodical literature, uh, the variety of material that you can find online uh, by doing uh, search for your passage or search for key words and terms or even phrases in your passage, how they're used in other places, and how various authors, whether in books or in periodical literature, have addressed. So this is, again, uh, to have a full bibliography uh, at the end. So that's the outline of your final research paper exegetical process.